What's up, MetaNerds? Gonna keep this one short and to the point about a couple parts from the Episode 9 Visual Dictionary. Two questions that many fans had about the Exegol fleet were how was it built and how was it kept a secret? It could have been the case that these ships, like the Ziston and the Tie Daggers, were built somewhere else and secretly transported to Exegol. If not completely finished, most of the major work, like the hulls and reactor installation, etc., could have been done at some major shipyard and just transported here. Because just by looking at it, Exegol doesn't seem like it has a lot going on, just that massive structure that we find Palpatine and the Sith cultists in. But a couple details point out that for sure everything was built on Exegol. Not on the surface, exposed to that dangerous atmosphere, but actually inside of the planet. Vader and Palpatine had wayfinders to get to Exegol, and even if somehow you did know where it was in the unmapped unknown regions, you couldn't get there without this device showing you the route. Palpatine and or Vader used theirs to transport the early equipment and cultists that would work on this contingency plan, years before the events of the original trilogy, or perhaps even alongside the films. Enormous chambers were carved out of the rock, with hidden hangar doorways that would eventually let out these fleets. This serves as just another layer of avoiding detection, in that even if somehow a probe just happened upon Exegol by sheer chance, the atmosphere would quickly destroy it. And any data or images that may have been sent back wouldn't show a massive shipyard in full production. Kind of like how we landed probes on Venus, but they don't last very long. If it was a really lucky probe, it might have seen the odd building we find Palps in, but I don't know if that would have been as immediate a problem if you showed the New Republic Senate. Just some weird old abandoned Sith relic. So now for the how. Well, the materials were actually shipped from Kuat and Trala in Sinar Jamis, the same company that made all of the major ships and vehicles for the First Order. And the merger of the two companies, Kuat Drive Yards and Sinar Fleet Systems, who were the major suppliers to the Empire and Republic. The Sith loyalists within those companies made it so that certain raw materials disappeared, fell off the transport as it were, and presumably with Vader's Wayfinder, maybe Snoke or some other agents would escort the goods to Exegol. There, the massive team of Sith Eternal scientists, technicians, and shipwrights put it to work not just making the same Imperial ships, but actually innovating them, creating things like a highly advanced TIE fighter and a capital ship-mounted cannon with similar power to a Death Star. Now, to me, the part about making raw materials disappear seems plausible enough. If you watch a lot of true crime documentaries, people will often buy materials from different places as to not set off a red flag. But I don't see why it wouldn't have just been easier for Palpatine as Emperor to just have a massive amount of materials all shipped out at once to Exegol. Even with democratically elected governments, there are parts of the military budget that are not disclosed because they are for classified projects. And we know that just moments after the Clone Wars, Palpatine was able to keep the Death Star a secret at a time when the Imperial Senate still had some power. Wouldn't it be easier for the Emperor to just make a massive shipment of all the materials at once when he had this privilege as ruler of the galaxy? Instead of while he's in hiding, hoping that none of those many Sith loyalists embedded in different companies ever betray you, or even accidentally slip up, or is being actively monitored by the New Republic or Resistance. And think about just how many trips they had to make to Exegol, and with 50% of your keys. The Wayfinder is like a set of keys needed to enter the planet, and so somebody had to have only one of the two keys in order to transport these materials. Just seems like way too many places for something to go wrong here. Could have just had a massive amount of material secret away under the stamp of a classified research project, and Palps would ride along with it to check on the site and ensure its arrival. Even if you needed a long train of ships to carry all that material, you could just do what Rey did, and have the Emperor in one with his Wayfinder, and all the other ships following the path. The rest of the plan is the same, you just leave everybody in that underground base in Exegol, and Palps leaves and goes back to ruling the Empire knowing that he has his set-it-and-forget-it Sith fleet crockpot going just in case Sith hits the fan. But what do you think of all this? Do you like the explanation from the Visual Dictionary, my modified way to carry out this plan, or were you thinking something totally different? Kind of like I said with the Satharian Rule of Two applying to Kylo and Rey, I actually think this whole secret stored-up fleet is a cool idea, even if it could have been portrayed better across the trilogy. But again, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you want to connect with us on social media, Find ways that you can help support this channel without it costing you a thing. Or check out our Patreon. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon. But most important of all, remember, it's not turtles, but contingency plans all the way down. And the Force will be with you. Always.